need to premix them first. I take mm, lots of white color here. Just the tip of palette knife, very less yellow color we need to add because we need to have light value because of that. Little by little, it's better to add and not see the hue change. A little bit more to see what happened for this part. Light blue color, again back more white. And then a tiny bit blue color. Our blue, it's already light, but not like that. The background, it's really, really light. Again, back to white, lots of white we need to have. And I mentioned even if you don't have any black, you can go with the brown color, dark brown, but we can make the gray by black and white. So again, I recommend to use less black, more white to see what happened. Uh, we can add the gray because around it is the grayish color. So apply with the gray, even if you see that your gray is really darker than the uh, real model, it's fine. We need to take heavy paint and already at the same time, you can apply with a pure white color and bring it on top of your gray and make some part because some part it's gray really darker, but some of some part it's light. So with a pure white color at the same time, bring it on your gray and make it a little lighter tone. Go and back, move your brush everywhere that help your color mix into each other. We need to finish our background at the same time. So because of that, we would like to have smooth surface. For the sky, we need to clean our brush always with napkin and then switch to your blue color. Blue mix with the gray at the same time. When both color are, are wet, they can very gently fade into each other and give us very nice result. The reason I want to finish our background at the same time is that because the sky should be really light and uh, there is no edges should be create. We need to have very uh, bland and nice sky at, with any color that we make. So at the same time, add the gray color, white and blue on the top part of uh, the canvas. Then we move on toward the center is a little bit more yellowy we can use. So I take yellow. Each time I want to switch the other color, I, I clean my brush with a napkin, not with the water, because I would like to use heavy paint. So I clean my napkin, uh, my brush with the napkin. And at this, at the same time, I bring the white color that I premix with the white the yellow color premix with the white for both sides into the center, left and right. Then move on, clean my clean the brush, then move on toward blue and let the blue be in between and then bring it on top. We can use a lots of brush stroke to help our paint fade into each other. At the same time, you can use pure white up actually, but make sure not to lose any color. If you cover them again, you can back like yellow and bring it on top. It's better your creamy color not really mix with the blue a lot. Yellow with the blue can make the green color, but but creamy, I, I don't say about the creamy color. Creamy color cannot make any green color. It's fine. Very gently touch the surface with very less pressure. Clean the napkin, your brush. Even we can switch to our the little white color. So gradually from the top, I bring this brush stroke toward the bottom part of canvas. 
by adding heavy paint on top. And very gently touch the surface. And then on the bottom part, it's more grayish color here on the bottom part. So again, back toward the gray. But I know my gray is a little darker. And I have the reason to make it darker than the things that I see because the edges is darker. And I make this dark. But at the same time, I bring the pure white color into gray. That give me better result. So I mix at the same time on top of the gray with the white. And come close to the center and let it blue and uh, this creamy color, yellowy creamy mix into this grayish color. So I put my brushes with the tip like this like that, straight. And I imagine, okay, it's good to go like that. Draw the line. You can play with your brush a little bit. And even we can make some part a little bit thicker, that would be okay. Take your paint. Then bring it down here. And then we add a little bit thickness. If you would like to have heavy paint, take heavy paint with the brush and make the trunk tree a little bit more heavy, like that. Even some part which is not covered by paint, I can back and add some tone on top and make it more heavy. Make sure not to make it two line, it's okay, just one line. And then it's divided into two parts from the bottom part. Here from the trunk tree, it's divided into two parts and the other branch is rich to the right side of the canvas, like that. So again, back and cover this part. Most of the time, the branches are heavy when it's connected to the trunk tree and it's narrow when uh, at the end and it's moved up to, uh, towards the sky. So it's okay, the thickness here.
green color and I already have a yellow in my palette. So two green, I would like to have it. One is the pure uh, hooker green. The other, if you have light green, you can add light green beside that. If not, with the yellow color, I would like to make a tiny bit lighter value as well. So I mix yellow with green, with hooker green and make this light tone. We have, we have different parts. I draw one narrow line with this and then draw some line beside that. Narrow line beside this with the tip. Make it pointy on top and add some just with a touch of tip of the brush we can make this shape of leaves. This is the tiny line. Start with the bottom part, adding one line, two, three, four, five, six, and bring it close to the top. Again, start from the bottom. Some line, draw the tiny line, connect to this first line, and make it look like triangle shape. Bring it on top. Even in between, I, I mentioned about the <clears throat> lighter green, you can add some light green in between that. Even we can add, we can wait everything get dry, then add this light green randomly on top of this cone. It's look like cone leaves, something like that, between that. Then clean your brush.
And I draw the line to see, to have an idea about the bottom part of their body should be here, one of them, the other here, a little bit. I draw just a tiny bit line to have an idea. Then one of them is smaller than the other. So the one that is on the right side is smaller. I draw the line that this is good for the top of the body, which is head. For the other, for now, I don't draw anything. I just make this one first, a little bit circly, curvy shape on top. And then make a little bit more the round shape, but and at the other side, which is on the left, on the right side, it's not really circly. It's a little bit past from here. It's okay if you draw all the part with the black, we will come by the other color. Just go like that. And then it's, first of all, it look like the heart here. We draw it like this shape, very gently and reach here. It's a kind of, it's kind of like a heart, like that in a simple shape if you would like to imagine. Then adding some dark color because the top of the head is really black. I cover it by black. Like this and a little bit on the back is black. And that's enough. I don't need to add more black for this part. Separate here. And a tiny long line for the tail. This is my first chikadi. So tiny bit for the tail. It look like small triangle shape for the nip. When we draw one of them, it's more easy to uh, draw the other, the second one beside this one. So we have an idea about the space. The bottom part, it's okay to be placed here. I draw one line here to have an idea. This is good for the body. I don't want to connect exactly beside each other or have more space together. And then the top part, I imagine a little bit, this one is bigger. I draw a little tall. So after you, with the tiny lady, uh, line, you add this uh, separation place to have an idea about the other chick ID. So make a gentle seeker for the top of the head. Gentle seeker here. Even anytime we can fix the seeker shape. Bring here down a little bit. And then again, just a tiny bit, look like hard and then start the body. One half a part, half a part of heart is the bigger, one is smaller because the bigger is for the body, the smaller part is for head. And this is not circular shape, it's move on like that. because it would connect to the tail. I move on here and then connect this part with the half a heart as a body like this. And then long, it's not really long, it's a little tiny, draw the line for tail. One side of the body bird, I try to add a tone with the gray here. Even if we go with the heavy paint would be okay because uh, it's okay to make some uh, like a fur on top and add some, let me bring it close to camera, add some 
heavy paint like that. I would like to show a little bit texture on it. If you are happy with the texture, take some heavy paint and draw with the line like that and make it liney. Like heavy paint, I mean, let me beside this one. Heavy paint like that. Bring on top, cover it like this. Again, back, bring heavy paint. It's lovely on top of the painting. And after it gets dry, it, it when you touch it, you can feel this texture. It's not mandatory to make a texture, but some part of the painting, I find it's nice to have it. But if you are not like heavy paint, you can go with a flat color. We make by just a gray, but we will bring some more uh, black on top. Half of it I cover it just by gray. Let me finish it like this. And then on top, clean the brush, just a pure black. With a pure black, we draw some line on top of this. It can mix together, give us a nice result, or just a pure brown, uh, black come on top and make some texture. So some part is the darker, so I bring the more here. Some part is less. Then clean. Even we can come and bring some pure white color and draw one or two line on top. When you bring heavy paint, you need to add very, very less pressure in your hand. Take some white, bring it up here, adding a little bit water on it. Just a bit drop of water and make it runny like that. Not, not much runny, but a little bit. It shouldn't be really heavy. Diluted your uh, brush hair into that, turn it, turn it to all the parts should dilute it to this water-based acrylic. And then, we try to draw circle of snowflake, big and small. It's better to be really water-based to fade in the background for the bigger size because the bigger size of snow is just fade around and the water can help us make them fade. Randomly adding some fade background, uh, a little bit this water base of big snow. These are so light. I add and spread everywhere. Sometimes between this uh, small snowflake, we can add heavy paint because I mentioned adding a little water in it. When you add the water, it's fade and make uh, it move to background and transparent. After it gets dry, sometimes it's not visible a lot. But in between, I recommend to add heavy paint as well, not for the big one, for the small one, because we would like to see 
this is no we don't want all of them disappear to the background i mean just a heavy texture like that a little bit it's it's better to happen one side of the branch not both sides and it's better to show it it's on top so we need to bring some heavy paint randomly uh, not disappear uh, the brown color but and and it's it's better not all with the line connect together a little bit make it heavy bigger smaller go into sky or bring it in inside the gray the brown color like that to show this is covered by snow with a tip of flat brush and even the other side heavy or less for all these branches it happened for some part we can show that it's a lots of snow for some part uh, less snow and this is just a repeating repeat and repeat for all the branches and for the leaves that we have it should cover by snow too but not all 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 the parts just randomly bring heavy paint somewhere like that randomly adding some white color in between Thank you.